Shalom, my friends. This is Impact to Impact Ministry. We have been given a mandate of God. God would have asked us to join with Him in sharing the message of hope. You see, the hope that God has given to us is in Christ Jesus. He offers peace eternally. And we, here at Impact to Impact Ministries, are helping other people to escape. We trust God that as you will join in our broadcast, that you will be blessed week after week, or whether it is that you meet us on the mission fields or simply on the streets, preaching this word of God, as we continue to declare hope reborn, Jesus Christ, indeed, hope to all nations. welcome you to a broadcast impact to impact trust that you will be blessed in jesus name we're giving all sinners a brand new start impact to impart we're sending the message this morning i'm going to be taking my script from the book of genesis genesis chapter 47 praise the lord verses 1 to six. Hallelujah. Praise Lord. It says, Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brethren and their flocks and their herds and all that they have are come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brethren, even five men, and presented them unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. They said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land are we come. For thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. I want you to bear those two places in mind, Canaan and Goshen, because that is what I'll be ministering this morning about. Verse 5 said, And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land, make thy father and brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen, let them dwell. And if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. Praise the Lord, you can have your seat this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, I'm here to let you know we have read the story and there are two places that were mentioned, Canaan and Goshen. But I'm here to remind us that your Goshen is not your Canaan. Praise the Lord. Somebody needs to hear that. Your Goshen today is not your Canaan. Because sometimes many people confuse Canaan and Goshen. But God wants us to be reminded that Canaan and Goshen are two different places. Because you see, Goshen is a place of fixing up. It's the place where God puts you to get you ready for your final destination. You see, if we remember the story even before God would have given to Abraham the promise of Canaan. 
But God would have also tell him something. He said your descendants will be taken to a different place. They're not going to occupy Canaan right away. They're going to be taken to a different place. And they're going to be experiencing something that is not nice. And the Lord said to me to remind us that where you are now may not be your Canaan. It could be your Goshen. People cannot handle sometimes the outright blessings of God. And so they will mess it up. So God has to put us through a process in order for us now to be able to accept the things that comes with our Canaan. Amen. And there are many reasons why sometimes we don't understand why God moved you into a place of Goshen. Sometimes it's because God realized, listen... That you need to go through this situation. You need to go through a process. So that my purpose in your life. My purpose that I have determined. Can be a reality. Amen. For God to take us to a real destination. He has some work to do in us. God has some work to do with me. And he has some work to do with you. And I said God is the one that has to do the work. Not you, not I, because sometimes when we try to help God, we oftentimes mess it up. The Bible tells us plainly, we have to be made ready. We cannot just go and access what God has for us. Because a lot of time we can find ourselves in problems. Because you see, we, sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we don't even begin to understand God. We, don't, we have to come to face to face. Because remember, when God takes us from where we are, we are people going through stuff. And when God wants to do his work in us, God has to mold us. He has to take out some things. He has to strip away things. Remember the Bible says uh, you cannot put new wine into old wine skin because you cannot appreciate the value and the words. So your caution is where God is fixing you up, making you ready for the Canaan that he has for you. You see, Many times people are mixing up Goshen and Canaan because they resemble, there is some resemblance. Goshen is a good place, yes. When the children of Israel went into Goshen, it was a good place. That is why Joseph went, he told them, he said, when you get to Pharaoh, give him such and such information when he asked. Because Goshen represented back then the best part of the land. But God is saying you need to remember I'm putting you in here. Yes, it's a good land. But it is not where I want you to focus. It is not where I want you to think that this is the end for you. Yes, Goshen is a good place. It resembles Canaan. Because you see, what is it in Goshen are the things that we need. God not going to just take you and put you somewhere and leave you there. He's going to also provide for you. You see, Goshen was a place where the children of Israel could have gone. They needed Goshen. They needed, it provided them with food. It provided them with somewhere for them to be able to rest their head. But also, it was a place of chastening. See where you are. See if you are in your Goshen and you are mistaking it for your Canaan. See what is taking place. What is it that God is saying to you? Don't be content to stay in Goshen. See, Goshen represents torment. Because it is not where you were meant to be in the first place. When you're in Goshen, it represents quarter status. And it is in your enemy's territory. Let's say it again. Goshen represents torment. Because it is not where you was meant to be in the first place. It represents st quarter status. And it is in the enemy's territory. When you're in Goshen, you can never 
Become the full person who you were meant to be. Because if you are in the enemy's territory, whatever you do will be for the enemy's advancement. There is no development for you. You will never be able to own and possess anything because the devil will make sure that he gives you with one hand and he takes it back with another. And you become frustrated. And you wonder why nothing seems to be going your way. When you're in enemy territory, the enemy takes from you whatsoever he desires. It's the same thing with you. If you're in this life and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, know for sure that the devil is going to take from you whatever he wants. But when you come into Jesus Christ, you no longer belong to the devil. And you know that when you call upon Jesus, that he is there to answer you. Some people like to remain in Goshen and they are so comfortable. They are so comfortable because why? Their minds are occupied and they are comfortable and contented with what Goshen has to offer. Their minds are thinking about cucumbers and leeks and all the things that Goshen and they forget that Canaan is a land flowing with milk and honey or plump grapes, nice green grass, rosy things for you to occupy. They forget about Canaan because all that they have is what they would have known about. They only know that Goshen offers me cucumber and leeks but they forget about the beatings. They forget about the humiliations. They forget about all the things that Goshen offers. Remember, Canaan was built upon a promise. Because when God would have called the children of Israel for Father Abraham, he, he gave him it. And he said, I would bless you and I would bless your offspring. So it was theirs for the taking. But they didn't know anything about Canaan. All they knew about was Goshen. And in order for them to understand, they would have heard the story because it would have been handed down from generation and generation. But you know the things about when you're going through beatings? All the promises, all the nice things that were told you before, all your dreams, all your aspirations, you think to put them aside because all you can concentrate, you, you come to the place in your mind where you're saying, well, this is probably I deserve this is all that I can achieve but your reason why you can come to that conclusion is because you haven't yet realized that you are not in the land of Canaan you are still in the place where God is fixing you up you are still in the place where God is making you ready to possess what he has in store for you You have to desire your Canaan real bad. You must have a desire for Canaan. Because you see, when you get fed up of your living in Goshen, and you start to call on God, and he begins to move to bring you out, it won't be easy. Let me say it again. You have to desire your Canaan real bad. Not just desire it, you know. You have to desire it real bad. Because when you get fed up of living in Goshen, and you start to call on God, and God begins to work to move you out, it's not going to be easy. If we look at the children of Israel when they were in Goshen, when Moses and Aaron went and he said to Pharaoh, God said, let my people go. Pharaoh was bold enough to say, who is this God? I don't know this God and I am not going to let the children of Israel go. It's the same thing with you when you begin to call on God. The 
Spirit lets you know that he isn't giving up. He invested too much in you to release you unto God. The devil will lay claim to you. So you have to want your Canaan real bad. God equipped Moses to go in. Because God would have showed him all the signs. He would have told him everything. But Moses was just a man. But could I remind us today, just the way God equipped Moses, uh, God equipped Jesus Christ, uh, and he came and he died. Uh, when he went down into hell, uh, the devil couldn't even keep him down. Uh, so he is more than able to bring you out uh, into your Canaan. He is able to move him. Jesus is the only one that could come into your Goshen and to take you out. What it requires of you is trust in God and fight. You have to be able to fight. Listen, brethren, this Christian walk is not an easy walk. Don't think for one moment that the devil will allow you to come out from his kingdom so easy don't think for one moment that the devil doesn't love your company in goshen because you see he's a master strategist oh he knows how to make things work for you from the moment you start to call upon god the devil know how to relax a little let you become comfortable again lull you to sleep again and when you become satisfied and content the devil gets back on your case so he knows you more than you think he knows how to work it but the Bible says that we ought not to be ignorant of his devices we must be able to watch that situation and we must be able to say aha uh -huh, this is the devil's work but you see, the problem is too often, too many believers, uh, we have become so complacent. We are not watching anymore. And I have a warning for us. And I say us because I'm including myself. You see, this season that we are in, the Bible says that we need to keep watching Many brethren, because they have become so caught up in so many different things, they are not watching the Bible says, watch less. That day should come upon you unexpected. When you're in Goshen, you were going through your beatings. Oh, it's so painful. Some people can't even call upon God. Some people, the beating, the chastening is so much. Oh, they become so weary. Even their very souls become so tired. That's why the psalmist David had to encourage him himself. He said, soul, why art thou disquieted within me? Rise up for I will yet praise God. You see, when you're in caution and you're going through, you must be able to find something from deep within. And you must be able to say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his name. You must be able to bring out a song. You must be able to lift your hands and to praise God. You must be able to say, if the Lord is on my side, who can be against me? You need to be able to say, oh, my God, my God, you are good. You are such an awesome God. But sometimes we forget about that and we begin to grow. Oh, nobody knows my sorrow. Who cares what I'm going through? God, I know you to be real now, but I don't know why you're not coming out. No, 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 you're contradicting yourself. You must be able to say, God, in you do I trust. My eyes are unto you, Lord. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord who made the and the altar. God, I would trust you in my whole heart.
when the devil, your enemy, is on your back, I am thankful today that God says, listen, I'm going to deliver you. God tell Moses, he said, listen, I have one more sign to give to Pharaoh. Pharaoh think he is bad? Well, I saved the best for last. And the Bible tells us we know the story. When God decides you're coming out, listen to me, he will move heaven and earth to bring you out of your situation. When God says you are coming out, believe me, brethren, out you are coming. If Jesus say yes, then nobody can same no when God says listen this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use my mighty right hand and that is what God did Pharaoh had no choice but to let the children of Israel go because why even at that time Pharaoh would have realized now nah, this is more than man. This is no longer Moses I'm fighting against. This is no longer Aaron I'm fighting against. This is God. Even the people in the land of Egypt, they began to say to Pharaoh, listen, how long are you going to make us a snare? In the first place, if the Pharaoh had listened to the people, it would have never reached to that. But oh my God, God knows how to show off on your behalf. The Bible said he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Yes, my brethren, God wants to show off on your behalf. And it doesn't matter who he needs to harden their heart, to let them realize that you belong to him. He is going to do it. See, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. How many of us are leaning on our own understanding to get out? We know that we are not where we are supposed to be. We know that we are in Goshen. We are stuck. We are getting licks left, right, and center. We want to come. But we are looking to our own understanding. Probably if I do this, you know, like you're playing draft. If I make this move, then the devil would allow me to escape during this route. But oh, you can't play chess with the devil. Ah, he is the master of it. Who you need is Jesus uh, to be the one on the chessboard with you uh, because he's going to clear the way. He is going to get you out. Uh, you see, because coming out of your Goshen uh, and heading into your Canaan uh, is a manifestation uh, of your breaking through. Uh, your breaking through of all your doubts, uh, breaking through of all negativity, uh, breaking through of all hindrances, uh, of all limitation. It reaches freedom. When you're coming through, knowing you're entering into your land of freedom. Oh my God. If Jesus say yes. If Jesus say yes. Because he said all that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast them out. Said I'm able to keep until that day. What does Canaan represent for you? It's a question that you have to ask. You have to desire it real bad. What does Canaan mean? Do you want to really leave your Goshen? Because uh, at least you're telling yourself, uh, yes, uh, no things ain't all that bad, you know. Yes, I might get a little trials. Uh, yes, it's true, I'm going through some things. Uh, but at least I still have something. But won't you desire better than what you are getting uh, in Goshen uh, when you come into the land of Canaan, uh, a land that is flowing with milk and honey? 
here. It's a land of new beginning. It's a land of possibilities. All the things that you were dreaming of can now become a reality. Brethren, what is it that you desire in your Canaan? If you would examine yourself, if you would examine your life, you have to ask yourself, where am I now? Am I still steep? Steep, steep. Settling in Goshen, trying to find an extra comfort place in Goshen? Or have you come to that place where you recognize I need to be moving out? And you are on your way out. But as you take that step to come out, you feel the tug of Goshen in your back. Oh, where are you? This morning, Brendan, I want to ask you to stand with me. Praise God. I want you to take a little time. Just examine yourself. I want you to call on the name of your God. Because he is the one that is going to bring you through from your Goshen into your Canaan. Could you just lift your hands this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Father God. My God, Father Lord, you know your people, God. As we all stand before you. As we are all examining ourselves, mighty God. Oh God, Father, we pray, we ask God that you will search us, God. Hey God, those of us who need, Lord, Father God. Uh, Lord, uh, extra push to get out of Goshen. Uh, oh Father God, I pray that you're going to give that push, God. Uh, oh God, those who are shackled, uh, my God, in Goshen and they cannot get we say in the name of Jesus, oh Father God, that you will break those shackles off. Oh my God, that you're going to build a hedge round about them as you bring forth your people, God. Lord, oh come no longer are they content to be squatters in their enemy's territory because you, oh God, have made a promise, Lord. Oh God, Father, you said, come out, my God, and you're going to receive us. Lord, Father God, and even as we come out, we thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for the breakthroughs, my God. We thank you, oh God. Lord, we have not squatters, God, but we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Yes, Lord, you call us your children. You said as many as are led by your spirit, they are your sons and your daughters. Oh God. Today we pray for deliverance. We pray for a breaking up, oh God, of the devil's hold upon your people. We say, Satan, let them loose in the name of Jesus. We say, Satan, you have no part, no portion. We say, get thee behind me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today for your blessing. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing of Canaan, my God. Impact to impart. We're sending no message coming straight from the heart. Impact to impart. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. We're sending the message. 